This video from Sun 4S Help, we're taking a look at the out of the box first use and initialization of the ER900 series registers. In this video, I'm actually using a 940, but the process will be exactly the same on the 920 and very similar on the uh, raised keyboard version versions, the 925 and the 945. Um, so, how do you tell which model you've got? The flat keyboard machines are the 920, which has one printer or this one which has a flat keyboard and two printers so it's the 940 and then the other two the 925 and the 945 are raised keyboard machines the button presses that I do um, on this might be slightly different on those um, but you'll be able to follow if you've got access to the manual and what I do in this video will point you in the right direction so first thing this this kind of bit of a strange video to do so I've got a couple of disclaimers up front the first one is if you've ordered your machine to be pre-programmed and have got it don't watch this video because what I do in this video will show you how to wipe the machine back to factory um, out the box settings so you'll lose all the program that's been done on the machine. Um, the second thing is these are kind of these are really powerful machines. Um, they've got a lot of uses, so you can set these machines up to work with barcode scanners. You can have up to 10,000 scanning lines on them. You can program them to have different price levels, different menu levels. Um, you can set them up to have table tracking, cashier interrupt, so they're really good machines. Um, the problem with all that is that the way you set the memory allocation up is different depending on how you exactly want the machine to work and how you're going to be using it. So in this video I'm going to set the machine up with the standard memory allocation, um, like the default settings which presumes like a fairly standard use of the machine. I'll do another video showing you how you can um, edit the memory allocation but probably my biggest warning on this sort of machine is really these are what they used to call dealer only machines so you would buy this sort of machine off your local cash register dealer they'd come out to you or you would go to their showroom you'd explain what you wanted um, for your business how you wanted the till to work they'd recommend this machine they'd then go away and program it for you but they'd also be able to tell you little tricks on it and how to use it better and suggest better things for you You'd then have it delivered, installed, and they'd train you on how to use it. Um, and you could then give them a call, and if there was a problem, they'd sort it out for you, like the old-fashioned way of um, selling tills. Um, obviously, the internet's kind of skewed that a bit. Um, you can buy the machines online in the UK, certainly for less than 400 quid. Um, but, of course, when you're doing that, you're kind of you're losing the cash register guy's expertise so you, you, you people never seem to understand that the knowledge that a cash register dealer might have has been accrued over 30 40 years of programming samsung sam 4s casio sharp tills they know how businesses work they know what's going to work for you and kind of that's getting lost a bit with the internet you can buy the machines cheaper um, and have a crack at programming yourselves but you you're losing the expertise. Um, that being said, there's nothing wrong with buying them um, unprogrammed and having a crack at it yourself. You've just got to understand that this video, I, I'm this is a tutorial video and I don't know what you want from the machine. Um, um, you may have picked the machine up second hand as well actually. We get, we get quite a few calls on that, people having bought tills off Facebooks and like other places and then expect it to work um, set up for their business so this video kind of presumes you're in that sort of scenario where you've got a till with someone else's programming on it you want to wipe it and basically start from scratch that's what I'm going to show you how to do that's kind of my rant and disclaimer over at the start um, I'll do it so you know how to do it and then I'll show you how kind of the basics of how the machine works as well and then you can decide what to do after that so first thing you'll need is um, when you've got the machine you should have a sequence of keys with it and the key you need to carry out the, um, the factory reset memory allocation should be marked with the letter C so there we go it's that one it's the service key uh, you need to turn it round pop it into the key lock turn it round to the service mode what you'll notice when you put the other keys in they don't all go round to all the positions and that to protect you so the reg key will only go to the reg mode so for sales only so basically stop staff um, doing reports and programming and voids when you don't necessarily want them to um, once you're in the service mode there's a rocker switch on the side of the machine you just flick it to turn the machine off 
You then press and hold the charge one button, so it's that position on the keyboard. So if you if the keyboard doesn't say charge one, it's still that button. Press and hold that down. Um, turn the machine back on, and it will say RAM all clear. You need to then press top left, bottom left, top right, bottom right. You get some little arrows appear on the screen, um, and the machine will now perform the RAM all clear. So as I say, this is going to totally wipe all the programming information so if there's any products in there any prices in there that is all getting reset not just that but also the memory allocation so if this machine was set up with multiple price levels or table tracking that has all totally gone um, now we come to the decision where do we load the default setup i'm going to on this video and i recommend you do unless you watch my other video showing you how to mess around with the memory allocation and I'll go into what you can and can't do in more detail in that video. So to load the default setup you press cache and then you get a printout confirming your memory allocation. So 8000 PLUs, 14 clerks, 99 groups, um, allocated check is 50 so check is the number of tabs you can have open or tracking files so it might be if you're going to do table management on the machine you might have less tracks open or less checks available and get the check line so that is the lines per transaction you can have higher and I'll go into more detail in the other video about that allocated level that's the price level so that's set to two so for example if you didn't want two price levels or weren't ever going to use them you could set that to one and that would give you more memory for your tracking lines so you've got price level one, this keyboard says price level one and price level two, uh, one, but it's actually price level two. That's the end of the memory allocation. Should just be able to, when it says memory alloc, okay, clear. Service mode closed. What I would now do is turn the key all the way around to off and take it out, because you don't really want to be in the service mode. Service mode is really, in the old days, that was a dealer only position. Um, you're using and programming the till you shouldn't really have to go into the service mode unless something's gone wrong so what will happen is when the now when you go to the reg mode it says register mode closed that just means that someone needs to log on to the machine so you've got these clerk buttons here one two three four you can either press one of those or press a clerk number here a number sorry one clerk and you've got a sign in button so you can have more than the Four clerks. So if you remember on the memory allocation, we've got 14 clerks, so you should be able to sign in as all of those. Um, but yeah, when you've got clerk one loaded, the machine now works. Obviously, there's no programming in it, so when you press your PLU buttons, they just come up with a number and no price. Um, and you've got a default message on there. The date and time is actually correct. Obviously the message is a bit bland, so the next thing you want to do is really program the machine. So I'll put some video links which will be appearing on screen now showing you how to program your PLUs. So on this machine you've got 110 buttons here which can be programmed with a preset price and description. Um, you might want to set up your tax, there'll be another video for that. And then you'll also probably want to set up your receipt header message with your business name. So I'll put those links up. They're probably appearing on screen now so feel free to check those out. You can also subscribe to this YouTube channel or visit samforesthelp.co.uk for more. Thanks for watching.